The NFL knew what it was doing when it scheduled Detroit versus LA on Sunday Night Football in the Motor City, and it did not disappoint. Detroit picks up win number one in overtime, and we're talking all about it right here on Inside the Pride. Let's go. Welcome to Inside the Pride, presented by Whisker, maker of the Litter Robot. I'm Danny Rogers. Detroit survived the return of the Rams in week one. Running back David Montgomery punched in the go-ahead touchdown in overtime to send 60,000 fans inside Ford Field home with a smile. Let's relive the best sights and sounds from Sunday Night Football. 2024 begins with higher expectations and more promise than we've seen with this franchise in decades. We're counting you down to kickoff. It is game number one of the 2024 season. Matthew Stafford and the Rams are here. They have Super Bowl dreams of their own and also revenge in mind after that playoff game from last year. Forrest, you are so right. I know they got some re revenge on their mind today, but you know what? I think the Lions are ready. Stafford takes the snap, wants to throw. Looks, looks, Stafford pressure, throws, got it complete and buried immediately. There's the snap to Stafford, he's back. Quick throw, left side, got it complete to Cup, he's taken down immediately. Dropped in the backfield, Alex Anzalone again. What a first series for that linebacker. Stafford out of the short gun, there's the snap, gonna throw it again, Stafford back, looks, gonna get hit, gonna go down, sack back outside the 25 yard line. Levi Anzarike got him. There's the snap, spot, kick away. It is up and it is good. So LA's on the board. Jared takes the snap, fakes the give to Amon Ra, wants to float it left side, does, got it complete. That is Laporta with it, inside the 15. Laporta fights his way down to the 10 yard line. Goff up under center, single back Montgomery. Goff fakes the give to him, looks, looks, throws left side, got it complete. It is caught, Amon Ra stiff arms a man at the 10, gets hit at the six and dropped there. Hat in the snap, box the spot, kick away. It is up, it is good. And we got a 3-3 game. Stafford takes the snap, wants to throw again, does left side. It is knocked away and incomplete. Brian Branch got a hand on that. Stafford leans in, there's the snap. Matthew back on fourth down, looking, looking, throwing. It is knocked away and incomplete. Good defensive play by Carlton Davis on Cooper Cup that time. And the Lions will take over on downs. Deep back is Gibbs. Jarek fakes to him, throws, caught, J-Mo crossing, 40-yard line, 25, 50-yard line, Rams territory, and shoved out of bounds at the 41-yard line. The left deep back is Gibbs. Goff turns, gives it to Gibbs, finds a little crease, gets down to the one, stretches, did he get in? Oh, man, that might be a touchdown. That might be a touchdown. And it is touchdown Detroit Lions. Stafford sends Cup in motion to the right side. Matthews got it back to throw, looking, looking. Stafford throws, middle, it is picked off by the Lions. Intercepted by Detroit, Kirby Joseph has got it. The defense slams the door on LA again. Big time defense by these Detroit Lions. Slamming the door on LA a couple times, protecting a 10-3 lead. They'll go to the locker room with it. They'll get the football to start the third quarter. Goff's got it back and looking on third down. Goff looking, throws deep downfield, wants Jamo inside the 20, got it, 10, 5, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions! Jamison Williams, like a lightning bolt from Jared Goff, 52 yards. Stafford turns, gives to Williams, tries the right side and gets into the end zone for the score. We get a seven point game. We got a ball game, folks. There's the snap, spot, kick away. It is up and it is good. Goff takes the snap, wants to throw, looking, looking, throws, middle, it is intercepted by Los Angeles down at the 20-yard line. Stafford takes, wants to throw, does, left side, Cooper Cup at the five, end zone, touchdown LA. Jake Bates will come on in his first NFL game to try to tie this game with 20 seconds remaining. There it is, spot down, kick on the way, it is up and it is good. And that's gonna take us to the end of regulation. So we go to overtime. All right, new ball game. Lions win the toss, they'll get the football first. Score a touchdown, game's over. Goff takes the snap, turns, gives to Montgomery, right side, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions! This game is over! An opening night victory for the Lions. That team 
gave us everything they had, man. But the bottom line is, man, it's hard to break us now. It's hard to break us. As a matter of fact, you ain't gonna do it. We're 1-0 right now. I got two game balls. First one is this, man. You talk about closing out the game. And I said it the other day, somebody asked me, I said, man, you can start the game with this guy and you can finish it with him. And anything in between on offense, Dave Montgomery. Yeah. Alex Anzalone. Yeah. We gotta get better every week. Just a little bit better next week and we'll be good. All right, great win, man. Great win, because it's winning the NFL. Break it down. Hey, a win's a win in this league. They're hard to come by, especially against the good teams. Let's go. Lions on three. One, two, three. Lions. There it is. There it is. A win is a win, no matter how you get it. We'll hear more from head coach Dan Campbell as he previews the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who come to town for week two. We'll be right back after this. Inside the Pride is presented by Whisker and brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, Henry Ford Health, and by Meyer. Happy to welcome in head coach Dan Campbell. We had to pull you away from all your commercial acting to get you here in the studio. We loved it, by the way, um, but lots of growth coming from week one to week two, as always. Where's the number one area of growth you want to see against these bucks who are coming to town? Well, look, I, I think... Uh... Honestly, we talk about going into week one, and it's the man, major in the basics. Like the football 101, like we have to be at our best. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's what happens with every team in the NFL. When you, uh, man, you get away from the basics and you try to do too much, just hone in on the little things. So let's get back to the little things and really let's perfect the little things going into the next week. And as long as we're just all a little bit better, we'll be fine. Little things are going to go a long way with quarterback Baker Mayfield. Now a really familiar opponent for your defense. He's elusive as ever, knocked off all the rust in week one, which didn't look like a ton, but how do you limit him from making big plays, especially on the ground with his feet? He's a tough competitor. Uh, he is a smart player. He's going to play his reads here, and, you know, he, he does a good job of understanding what you're trying to do coverage-wise, but this is where he can be dangerous, man. You get him hemmed up, and you give him an avenue to get out. Like, it, yes, we got to close the pocket, but it is going to be important that we shut down those run lanes because he is not mobile. He'll find a way to get through. Plenty of weapons for Baker Mayfield in this offense. You got Chris Godwin, and then you got Mike Evans. Yeah. Six foot five receiver, had two touchdowns, including this one you're about to see. It's contested, almost as good of a throw just from Baker Mayfield. You can highlight him too, but. How do you limit plays like that from your defensive backs? Well, look, he's taking that. That's his alert throw. And he knows he's got 101. He's in a four-way here. So there is, there's no question. Everything's shifted over. If you got it, take it. And so really, this is about 101. You know, we put our guys in this position. They have to win against a very good receiver. But I do like our matchups. All right, let's go to this defense. I know you love Vita Vea up front, Coach. But yeah. I want to talk about outside linebacker Joe Tryon Shoyinka, who was productive last week, forced fumble, sack, Q. QB hit. What's your number one emphasis for your offense for him? Well, look, we're going to need to use some resources on him too now. We talked about V to V, but this guy, he's got length, he's got power. You can see here, man, he is running the hoop, uh, and you'll see it from behind. Man, when you've got a good get off and you do have length and power, that's that's where it becomes an issue. Now, I like our two tackles. I always will. That's a good matchup, but we'll, we'll put some nudges over there, some chips to help out, but he's certainly somebody we're going to have to pay attention to. These are two big matchups coming into Ford Field for week one and week two. I know your competitive spirit loves it. Yeah. How are you seeing your team rise to the occasion with these really big games? Yeah, well, I think they enjoy this. You know, I, I think this is, this is really what we've built to. We expect to be in big games. And uh, I think our guys know, I mean, there's a good chance this is a division winner out of the South. So this is where you, you, you can get a tiebreaker at the end of the year. You just don't know. And that's why these are important. That's why the Rams important. That's why this is important. But ultimately, you take it one at a time. And we get a little bit better, and let's get win number two. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. We always hear about the core of this team from Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. Keeping that group together for years to come in Detroit was the focal point of this past season, and Holmes got it done. Right here in this town, this football-loving town of Detroit, the roar has been restored. And one of the reasons why the roar has been restored is because of Amon Ross St. Brown. The Detroit Lions have given him a four-year deal worth more than $120 million. He is the highest paid wide receiver in the National wow. Football League. And he plays his football right here in Detroit. There's some massive news. More money coming out of Detroit Lions organization. 
Penny Sewell, who is one of the, I think, the first draft pick of the MCDC. Yes, sir. Brad Holmes era, I, I think. Yep. The first, this is our pillar, this is our staple guy. Who signs for $85 million Ooh. guaranteed. Let's go. Amon Ra St. Brown, yep. now Penny Sewell. MCDC and the pillars that they're building are going to be around for the long haul. Today, Brad Holmes continuing to lock up his core, signing offensive lineman Taylor Decker to a new three-year, $60 million contract extension. That's right, Rhett. The Lions have signed Jared Goff to a four-year, $212 million contract extension. Jared Goff, now officially, as the team intended, just the latest one after Amon Ross St. Brown and Panay Sewell locked up for the long haul. What they did in the offseason, and Brad Holmes, this is like accumulation of years. Okay, we're going to draft guys and develop, and then we're going to augment that. Now they've got their core, not just to get them through the season, but for years. So they've established who they are, not only on the field, but in the front office. And all of this stems from the top down, though. If Sheila Ford Hamp didn't green light paying the cash, we wouldn't have this. That's what successful organizations do. We try to reward the right players. If they're earning it, you know, through their performance on the field, but they're not earning it the right way with their performance off the field in terms of how they are in the locker room and, you know, what their impact is during the week, then it, it might not be the best decisions. But those guys, those guys do it all. Like, they do it on the field, but those are the type of guys that you want to reward because they do it right all the time and the locker room sees that. And so now players know, look, if you want to get rewarded, you know, this is, these are the type of things that has to be done. And so just really happy for those guys. And again, we'll continue to search and find more of those guys. It's not a bunch of those types hanging around, but uh, just really happy for them because we're all about earning it. We're all about accountability. Uh, we're all about persevering through the tough times. And so that's why I think in each one of those guys have had their own plight and special story and journey through the time where they did get rewarded. So happy for them and their families. I think it's just a testament to the work we've, we've put in. And again, it's only the beginning and, and now we can really push forward towards our goals and, and be on the same page even more so and, and know we're all pushing towards the same thing. And it's like, all right, now that's behind us. Now we go forward knowing what we're going for and to win a Super Bowl is, is the ultimate goal. This game is yes. over! Pack it up boys, we're going home! Brad Holmes and the Detroit Lions have been at work. The Lions signing quarterback Jared Goff to a four-year extension. He is the highest paid Lion in franchise history. The Lions have signed Jared Goff to a four-year, $212 million contract extension. Just the latest one after Amon Ross St. Brown and Panay Sewell locked up for the long haul. All right. Never been out of here, but... Get to go downtown yep. a couple times yeah. through the week and go to restaurants. And the, the grit and perseverance and the, um, the fight that this city has, I think it's something that, that I can bring to the table as well. And um, being a part of a city that, that has that in its DNA is, is so fun for me and so, uh, so cool of an opportunity and, and, and something that I, that I relish in being able to add the same type of feelings, you know, be, be, that, be that person of grit, perseverance, and, and, and fight every, every Sunday. I'm, always motivated. I don't think anything that happened in the last few months makes it go any further. Of course, you feel some type of way about it at first, but you know, I, I'm so looking forward to what's ahead of me and, and you know how I can help the Lions and how I can be the best I can be every day and, and, and really just focusing on that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Amazing. Crazy three years. <laughs> well, that video is very cool and um, I think that guy had no idea what he was in for, and I was very excited about being on the ground floor or something, and um, getting that opportunity to, to build it up, and I had high expectations. I, I, I think you never know how quickly it's going to happen, you know, drafting guys like, like Panay and Saint and a handful of other guys in that draft that are still helping us. And It was a building thing, but I think um, I was prepared to go through that, and it was never easy, it was never going to be easy. but. Uh, the people around me and, and our coaches and teammates and, and everyone um, helped helped get through it. It's been such a pleasure getting to know Jared. I have so much respect for the guy because he's so consistent, man. Every single day through the bad days, the good days, 
since year one to now, it's, he's the same guy every single day. He comes to work on phase and ready to go. Jared's the type of player that brings everyone along with him. You know, he makes everyone around him better. Talk about culture as well. You can't even, you know, place how important he is to this team. So uh, seeing him get that extension, I think, is exciting. And um, he's the, exactly the type of guy we need to lead this team. Look at what Brad Holmes has done this offseason and the rest of that Lions front office. Jared Goff has helped turn around that franchise. He's been one of the best quarterbacks in football. It's a sign of how well they played, how much the organization believes in them, and what the expectations for this team are moving forward. Everyone sees the reward, everyone sees the trophies and the extensions, but the, the journey and the, the growth in the three years in the daily process is, is really what matters. And you work so hard and, and you get rewarded, that's great. But I think all of that is irrelevant to uh, the journey and side of this deal is done. It, it takes up a lot of your mental energy and emotional energy and, and seeing those two guys and Saint, get their deals done and be rewarded and, and be locked in for, for quite some time like, like I have been. It's, it's fun, it's exciting. It means a lot to, to have done, um, done the hard part with them too. I think that's where the real culture and the real team building comes from is when you go through the, the hard times. Anyone can, can win together and that's easy, that's fun. But with a guy like Dan and Ben uh, being there for us and with us, and it, it, we kind of went through those times together and, and I've come out the other side now with, with pretty big expectations for ourselves and standards for ourselves. And it's a really cool thing to do and, and to be a part of. And that was always my vision when, when the trade happened is, you know, you feel sorry for yourself and, um, be down on the whole situation or you can view it as a positive and understand the opportunity that you have and um, be, be grateful for the people that are around you. And so Jared Goff has become something of a hero in this particular city for this team to go reward him. He's played his way back in to, to the conversation of being one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. He deserves it, right? The things he's done in Detroit is major. And I think all the Detroit Lion fans will appreciate him getting this contract. It's been really fun. They're, they're the best fans in the world. And um, I love playing for them. I love winning for them. And um, they deserve winning football. And uh, it's our job every day to go in here and, and work hard to, to give them that. And I'm grateful to play in front of them and, and, and happy I get to do it for, for a little longer now. The leader of that core is undeniably its QB1. Jared Goff rode the unpredictable waves of the NFL all the way to Detroit, a city where you can hear JG chants for miles. We'll be right back after this. Wishing for something special? Maybe it's VIP seats, the meal of a lifetime, or an unforgettable journey. Whatever it is, Community Financial Credit Union can make it a reality. Share your impossible dreams at impossibledreams.org by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the screen. We're firing up a brand new season of Rogers Rewind where every week I highlight some of my favorite moments. I featured my dad on here one time. He's been calling himself a movie star ever since. Anyways, love you dad, let's get into it. Week one, Ford Field crowd did not disappoint. Shout out to these guys for stopping me pregame. You brought the energy, you brought the chains. I'll see you back here for week number two. Uh, here's one of the newest Cubs of the Lions Pride. I'm featuring this little baby because I will be Aunt Dan Dan for the first time in a few weeks. I'm getting excited. We're going to add another Cub to the Lions Pride. Let's go. Shout out to Jamison Williams, his first career 100-yard game. This was a breakout game for him in year three. We're so fired up to see it for JMO. And that was not the only thing he did Sunday night against the LA Rams. Check this out. JMO had the second best run blocking grade of all the Lions. There you see it, Glasgow, Williams, Sewell. Jamo's has been told, no block, no rock. He hears you loud and clear. And a big dub on Sunday Night Football meant it was Victory Monday. Shout out to girlfriend here. I love the t-shirt. She was all ready for school. Shout out to Patrick DeVito for sharing this. And that wraps it up for this edition of Rogers Rewind and this episode of Inside the Pride. Detroit Lions kick off week number two against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers inside Ford Field. Kickoff is slated for 1 p.m. on Fox. We'll see you there.